I think we really have to take a step back and appreciate how the drama in Too Many Losing Heroines is legitimately some of the best handled in a school series, I think, this decade. Like, not saying overall the very, very best, but if you're making a top list, this one would be in there. And you can remove the amazing production that this show has, and I would still stand by the quality of the writing. And for those who think I'm exaggerating, I've legitimately covered over this year multiple series that had piss-poor production, yet I still enjoyed it because I liked the actual writing. So you can't just use the argument that this is a well-produced show, and therefore that's why people like me hype it up. Maybe for some people, but that ain't me. Kamari is a very unique character, not only for this show, but I think these types of shows in general. The idea of someone confessing and losing and feeling sad and having to overcome, fall in love again, that is the trajectory of human life to begin with. But her dynamic is already being handled so much different, and I think they did such a brilliant job and I think if you leave this episode and have any ounce of desire to be disrespectful towards Kamari, it is punishable by death in most countries. Let's just put it like that. Because, while I would still say Lemon is my overall favorite out of the cast, I just like her personality even if she can't quite understand that maybe some things aren't school appropriate, you love her for it. But Kamari's like that little sister dynamic that you just want to see her win so bad in life. And the idea of her confession... Like, she came into a situation where she was younger than these two. And it's like, the fact that her confession, knowing from her point of view she wasn't going to win anyway, but you have to get that out of your system. And then the idea of not being sad and scared when you see two lovebirds together, more so it's being sad that you can no longer be beside them because they're about to progress into the next chapter of their life, and it's time for you to start yours. It doesn't take away from the fact that you're sad as hell, but maybe you're like Lemon and you use running as a way to get that frustration out, or maybe you're more like Kamari and you like to write it out. But the fact that she's so selfless, that despite all that pain, her entire desire is to give these two a proper send-off, even though she wasn't the winning heroine. Like, if that's not a brilliantly written character, I don't know what is. I have full live reactions over on Patreon if you want to see my full and good thought to any of these wonderful Too Many Losing Heroine episodes. It's going to be over there exclusively. So... Another great episode. I honestly, this could have been the the second to last episode of a season. Like this, I think there's a lot of the directing, the music choice, the score, the way characters were coming together to make this all happen. It just kind of gave me the impression it was more of an episode 11 more than an episode 9. So I'm kind of interested to see because I wouldn't be shocked if by the end of episode 10 we finish this arc. And I kind of wonder, are we going to do something more similar to what they did with the Beach episode? You know, episodes like those where the characters kind of, you know, come together. Maybe we start the progression on a new arc. But ultimately, for a show that you would think wouldn't be able to keep the gimmick going, surprisingly, you're right, it didn't keep the gimmick going of just watching characters fall flat on their face. While that can still happen and still have elements of comedy because of it, I like that they've naturally snuck in drama and sadder, softer moments on top of that, so the characters can still be fun and wacky, but at the same time, they actually feel like people overall. There's elements of this show that will always remain at batshit wild. I'm still convinced there's two faculty members of this school. There's a homeroom teacher who is most likely drunk every other scene, and a nurse that I'm, at this point I don't think is even working for the school. I think she just snuck in. And because of either the ghost town faculty not existing. Or there is other teachers and we just don't see it because they're not a part of our main crew's class or whatever. Uh, they just assume she works there. Because four episodes ago? Five episodes? It was a little bit ago. We learned that she listens in on student conversation. So we knew she was tapping in. And that's grounds for goddamn arrest. The fact that she ends this episode filming two 16-year-old students, I, I don't know, like in that area, and they're like having this like romantic scene, and she's, and she's hoping she sees more. When our boy brought Komari home, the, so, so it, 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 it's a two-parter. The teacher, aka the nurse, took clothes off of a student to put her into pajamas. That's already a can of worms that's not allowed. But then as she's leaving with the younger siblings, you two have fun in here. 
that wasn't just like, hey, you know, ha no, that was wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I probably placed a GoPro somewhere in this room and I hope, and I hope you make me proud. She needs to be arrested. Whatever you think of her. And I already know because she has a hot anime character design, people are going to be like, no, nah, she's fine. Replace her with some fat, bald anime character. And people's reactions would be a lot different. We have to admit we have double standards for this shit. But it is wild to see her. The only adults in this school have nothing really about them that give me the impression that they are meant for the job. The nurse is the worst of the two, but still, the other one, uh, even if she ain't actually drunk coming to school, which she does give me the impression she does, uh, it doesn't change the fact that she's wild. But uh, that's kind of where the comedy currently has been for the most part. Like, yeah, there's still some funny reactions from characters, but I feel like more about, like, it's the out-of-pocketness of, like, where are the teachers to say you can't be wearing that slutty outfit? Like, the fact that students... Like, Lemon didn't have the sluttiest outfit. That goes to, well, I think the melons speak for themselves. But the fact that Lemon wore what she did, and it was, it was the students who said you can't do that. Wasn't a teacher. Wasn't a faculty member. Wasn't a principal. Do we even have a principal? Who the hell knows? No, it was the students. This is a... This is a self-run school by students. It's fantastic. But uh, some parts of the animation in the show still really surprise me. There's a moment, it's pretty early into the episode, and it's when um, Nuck as well as Kamari are in their little room. And just the fact that, like, at multiple points, he gets up in his full body, like, animation to stretch and grab things and pass things around. It doesn't seem like much, but, like, that's the type of stuff you would normally see a studio go completely 3D with in order to give that full range of motion, because animating all the joints in the smallest details is just usually too much for such a simple scene yet this show is animating water better than i've seen all year it's animating a facial animation body reactions as if they're real people it's just an insanely well put together show and it definitely had a very healthy production schedule because there's no way they're still managing to make this show look and feel this good all the way to episode 9, unless it had one hell of a production schedule. In general though, I'm very pleased with this episode. I mean, Kamari, if, if you walk out of this episode seeing how selfless she is, and you have any sort of disrespectful comments for this character, you're literally Satan. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You can have different favorite characters, and like I said, Lemon's still mine, but she is... Deserves the damn world, man. She is a, a little rascal, but goddamn, is she quite literally working herself to the bone. She doesn't have to be like this. Yes, she is doing it because she cares so much. Like, that is a insanely well put together character. Just fantastic. And I look forward to seeing where episode 10 is going to go from here. But let me know your thoughts and feelings on this week's episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we have full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. All right, so today we got Azuro. Ava91, Nepsin1D, Ikono, Mark, Kristen Navadiad, Ricardo, Stidamore, Calcone, and we also have Twin Cats24. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and you all have a good one.